Obesity Explained, Episode 2, Bile Acid Flow and the Aryl Hydrocarbon Receptor, featuring Taya Brownin from Poo RT. In the first episode, we introduced our supervillain, the Aryl Hydrocarbon Receptor. In this episode, we are going to introduce one of its arch nemeses, Poo RT, and specifically the extract Taya Brownin from Poo RT, which incidentally I sell at fireinabottle.net slash shop. If you purchase some of that, it helps me make these videos, and I think it's pretty good for you. So in the loop, we talked about how bile acids are an important feedback signal that controls your metabolic rate. Also in the loop, we saw that TCDD is an environmental obesogen. It's also called a dioxin. And what TCDD does is it activates the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. And the aryl hydrocarbon receptor goes on to make things fat. These are mice. That yellow line is mice. You can see that they're fatter than the other mice while consuming less calories. So aryl hydrocarbon receptor is more fat, less calories. And this is uh, mice on poo or tea. And you can see those orange mice. Um, they're eating just as many calories as the red mice. Both of these mice are on a high fat sort of Western style diet to make them fat. The red mice become very fat and the mice in kind of orange stay as lean as the mice in green on the same number of calories as the red mice. So poo or tea is, is lean on the same number of calories. Another thing that how the era hydrocarbon receptor and poor T differ is that when the AHR is activated, there's a dramatic decline in bile acid excretion. So the AHR decreases bile acid excretion by about two thirds. Conversely, uh, poor T and Taya Brown from poor T triple bile acid excretion. And you might be thinking, why do I care about bile acid excretion? This is a 20 year long study. Uh, a cardiologist took people into the hospital who came into the hospital complaining of chest pain. They averaged 62 years old. They put them through a thorough examination, said some of them are free of coronary artery disease. It was just a, a random thing. And other of them said, yeah, you have coronary artery disease. And they, they broke the people into two groups and they followed them for 20 years. And these lines are a little bit morbid, but every time someone dies, that line goes down. And so after 20 years, 78% of the people who the cardiologist had pronounced free of coronary artery disease survived. But at the beginning of the experiment, they also checked their bile acid excretion levels. And this second chart, it's the same people, but now they're grouped, instead of grouped whether or not they have coronary artery disease, they're grouped whether they have high or low bile acid excretion. And the ones with high bile acid excretion, 90% of those survived 20 years. So having high bile acid excretion is a much better predictor of longevity than whether or not your cardiologist pronounces you to be coronary artery disease free. Also, another reason in this series, we're going to follow the money. GlaxoSmithKline is moving into phase three trials of a drug called linerixabat which is a bile acid reabsorption inhibitor. So this is a drug that GlaxoSmithKline is spending tens of millions of dollars on that increases bile acid excretion by preventing its reabsorption in the intestine. And in a recent trial, um, GlaxoSmithKline, you see this GSK, that means the GlaxoSmithKline drug was combined with something called FGF15, which we are going to get to FGF15 in future episodes. So like and subscribe uh, come back. We're going to talk about all this stuff. Um, and they showed that in mice, this bile acid excretion increaser, we'll call it, combined with FGF15, led to dramatic weight loss in mice. And this is, I just decided to put that drug on this chart with our, our effects of TCDD and Taya Brownin on bile acid excretion. And you can see that the GlaxoSmithKline drug does increase bile acid excretion pretty dramatically, although not as well as the poor tea. Poor tea also has been shown uh, to cause weight loss on humans, and this is statistically significant. On its own, it's not a huge amount of weight loss, but multiple studies have all shown clinically or statistically significant weight loss in humans. How does this work? 
Okay, so here's how we make cholesterol and bile acids. We start with acetyl-CoA and NADPH in our cells. An enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase converts the acetyl-CoA and NADPH into cholesterol. Another enzyme called CYP7A1 or CYP27A1 converts that cholesterol into bile acids. And those bile acids get uh, secreted into our intestine when we eat. They help us absorb nutrients from our food. And most of them are reabsorbed by solute carrier 10A2. Um, and the ones that solute carrier 10A2 misses wind up being excreted. And so the solute carrier is the thing that the GlaxoSmithKline drug is blocking. And it prevents excretion by helping to reabsorb the bile acids. And okay, so where do the raw materials for bile acids come from in cholesterol? Well, they come from our food. Fat, carbs, alcohol are all broken down into acetyl-CoA. When acetyl-CoA goes into the Krebs cycle, it produces NADH, and some components of the Krebs cycle can make NADPH. Um, the statin drugs, I'm sure you've heard of them, the cholesterol-lowering drugs such as Lipitor. What do they do? Well, they block HMG-CoA reductase. So they prevent you from using acetyl-CoA and NADPH to make cholesterol, and that lowers your the amount of cholesterol that you have. Um, the AHR works in the opposite way. So the AHR actually increases HMG-CoA reductase, but then it blocks uh, CYP7A1 and 27A1, the things that then convert the cholesterol to bile acids. And this results in an increase in cholesterol level in response to TCDD. Um, the AHR also activates the solute carrier 10A2, which helps reabsorption of bile acids and again prevents excretion. And you've already seen the effect that the AHR or the TCDD has on bile acids, which by activating the AHR, bile acid excretion plummets. Um, but interestingly, so this is rats given a single shot of TCDD and, and this is uh, cholesterol levels in their blood. And you can see uh, the effect after uh, 24 hours, you have an increase in blood cholesterol. And after a week, you have a very significant increase in cholesterol levels just from a single shot of TCDD. Um, so then how does poor tea work? Well, the tea brown from the poor tea uh, also much like the AHR increases HMG-CoA reductase. So with poor T, you're converting more acetyl-CoA and NADPH to cholesterol. But the way that is different is it also increases CYP27A1 pretty dramatically. So now you're converting more of that cholesterol to bile acids. And furthermore, uh, no one has looked at the effects of poor T directly on SLT10A2, but... Uh, the poor tea increases intestinal peristalsis, which means, you know, it keeps things moving down there, right? To keep those bile acids moving through and not being reabsorbed. And the result, of course, is massively increased bile acid excretion with the poor tea. Um, and this is in humans. So this study showed that in humans, if you give them uh, poor tea, indeed, uh, so the, the blue color, that's uh, humans without poor tea, and the cranberry color, that is bile acid excretion of humans given poor tea. And you can see the bile acid excretion goes up in all types of bile acids. And it's not as dramatic in the mice, but mice have a metabolic rate about nine or 10 times as high as humans per kilogram. And so sometimes the effects in mice are kind of magnified. Um, but this is a very significant result in humans. Uh, this is another study, this, this graph on the left. And you can see that uh, LDL cholesterol in humans drops as a result of poor tea extract. And so you see, and this is from that last slide, but you see bile acid in bile acid excretion increasing and cholesterol dropping. And this is just the pathway on the right. You can see with poor tea, uh, more cholesterol is being made, more is being converted to bile acids, more is being excreted, and that's what's causing cholesterol to drop. And so you might be thinking, oh, this bile acid excretion is having this beneficial effect because it's increasing calories out, right? Because if you are taking this acetyl-CoA and excreting as bile acids, uh, you're, that's, that's more calories that are just not being used. No, uh, the amount of 
excretion of bile acids in the in the um, the heart disease study where people were much more likely to live 20 years, the difference between the high excretors and the low excretors was like 300 milligrams a day in humans. That's a third of a gram. That's about three calories per day, which is completely insignificant. So how then do these drugs work? Well, the fact is cholesterol synthesis lowers reductive stress. And this recent study showed this, um, that that blue line that's the amount of nadph in cells that were given uh, a statin drug that prevents cholesterol from being produced in the first place and i said the starting materials of cholesterol are acetyl coa and nadph so if you prevent cholesterol from being produced nadph builds up in the cell um in these cells you see the NADPH levels drop, and that is because they gave uh, they gave the cells a drug that increases cholesterol synthesis. So if you increase cholesterol synthesis, NADPH levels predictably drop. Um, again, so remember, fat, carbs, alcohol make acetyl CoA. They go into Krebs cycle, and that produces NADPH. Um, NADPH and NADH levels are linked through enzymes such as NNT and others. And reductive stress is uh, when acetyl-CoA, NADPH, and NADH build up in your cells. Uh, Acetyl-CoA, NADPH, and NADH, that's like money in your checking account. You can have stored fat in your body and carbs stored as glycogen. And that's like money in your savings account. It's safely stored away. You're not going to spend it this week. Um, but these enzymes or these factors, acetyl-CoA, NADPH, and NADH, that is money in your checking account. You're going to spend it this week. You're going to spend it on something. Uh, the question is what you're going to spend it on. And you can see that we can either use this acetyl-CoA, this extra acetyl-CoA in our checking account. We can use it to make cholesterol or we can use it to make fat. And reductive stress having a high amount of NADH, NADPH, and acetyl-CoA lowers your metabolic rate. This is an enzyme, we'll call it a mitochondrial enzyme. Um, when acetyl-CoA levels are high, this is the active site of the enzyme. That's like where, that's like the business end of the enzyme, how it converts things into different things and basically how your metabolism runs. And when this acetyl-CoA is high, um, it actually can stick. It, it literally sticks kind of like rust onto your enzymes involved in energy metabolism. And you can see this study says as much as 50% of all mitochondrial proteins are acetylated and that proteins involved in energy metabolism are overrepresented. So when acetyl-CoA is high, your mitochondrial enzymes become acetylated. And we have an enzyme called SIRT3. You can see the big scissors here. SIRT3, its job is to take those acetyl groups off and keep your, your uh, metabolism humming. But... If NADH is high, if you are in reductive stress, SIRT3 cannot do its job. This leads to uh, mitochondrial enzyme acetylation. This bogs down your metabolic rate. And so the ability to offload that little bit of excess acetyl-CoA and NADPH, it's not directly calories out, but if that stuff builds up, it lowers your metabolic rate. And so it has this outsized effect, this, this ability to just make a little extra cholesterol and then excrete it as bile acids. And so you can see this, this is a, um, so these are two different groups of mice. You can see the body mass gain on the left. So, so these in this, uh, where I have this arrow in this medium gray color, those mice were given in a drug that blocks the aryl hydrocarbon receptor and if you block the aryl hydrocarbon receptor things become very lean even though you can see over here they're eating the same amount or even a little bit more food and so you see again the same amount or more calories and much lower weight and so that they the mice that have the aryl hydrocarbon receptor blocked must have a higher metabolic rate or how else could this be true um, with poor tea, it's exactly the opposite. So you see the orange and red mice, same amount of caloric consumption, but the mice given poor tea weigh much less, which means they must have a higher metabolic rate. And the orange and red mice, again, were given the Western high fat diet, but the blue and green mice 
are given a normal controlled diet and and the blue mice ate statistically more than the mice on the green controlled diet and they weighed statistically less significantly less and so in this case of poor tea you actually see more calories lower weight so poor tea by preventing this reductive stress is increasing metabolic rate uh, this is a nice study that kind of summarizes all this. So on the left, you see rats given a high-fat Western diet meant to fatten them. And what happens is right away, so this is day zero before the experiment starts. On day 15, you see higher LDL, that's bad cholesterol. You see higher triglycerides, and the rats are gaining weight relative to controls. And bile acid excretion is, hasn't really increased yet. Eventually, bile acid excretion does increase but it increases in parallel with higher ldl higher triglycerides and relative weight gain now over here these rats are given a taya brownin extract and what happens in them is the bile acid excretion increases right off the bat and then increased bile acid uh, excretion prevents the rise in ldl the rise in triglycerides and it prevents the weight gain. And as long as that bile acid excretion, and it continues to increase over 45 days, as long as that bile acid continues to increase, uh, LDL and triglycerides and relative weight gain do not increase at all. This is in humans. Uh, this is one study showing that uh, PUERT does indeed decrease total cholesterol total triglycerides, and it increases fecal bile acid excretion. This is a second study in humans. Um, you see that PUERT decreases LDL cholesterol, it decreases triglycerides, and people lose weight. So, conclusions. Uh, PUERT, again, I offer a Thea Brown an extract at fireinabottle.net slash shop. I think I'm the only one in the U.S. to be offering this. Um, PUERT and Thea Brown in increase cholesterol and bile acid synthesis. Increased cholesterol synthesis lowers reductive stress. PUERT also increases bile acid excretion. Uh, the lowered, the increased cholesterol synthesis and increased bile acid excretion leads ultimately to lower triglycerides, lower cholesterol, and lower weight. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. Come back soon. There's going to be 